Good day, I am Crystal C. Andrada from M3B and the topic that I will discuss is about the protein S deficiency. So what is protein S deficiency? Protein S deficiency is a disorder of blood clotting. People with this kind of condition have an increased risk of developing abnormal blood clots. So individuals with mild protein S deficiency are at risk of a type of a clot called DVT or deep vein thrombosis. So DVT that occurs in the deep veins of the arms or legs. If a DVT travels through the bloodstream and lodges in the lungs, it can cause a life-threatening clot known as a pulmonary, pulmonary embolism. Doctors can raise the risk of abnormal blood clots in people with mild protein S deficiency. These factors include the increasing age, surgery, and pregnancy. The combination of protein S deficiency and other inherited disorders of blood clotting can also influence risk. Many people with mild protein S deficiency never develop an abnormal blood clot. However, in severe cases of protein S deficiency, Infants may develop a life-threatening blood clotting disorder called purpura fulminans soon after their birth. Purpura fulminans is a characterized by the formation of blood clots within small blood vessels throughout the body. The body. These blood clots disrupt abnormal blood flow and can lead to death of body tissue or, the, or also called the necrosis. So widespread clotting, widespread blood clotting uses up all available blood clotting proteins. So for the signs and symptoms, individuals with protein S deficiency are at risk for developing blood clots. So specifically blood clots that begin in veins are the venous thromboembolisms. Veins are the blood vessels in the body that carry blood to the heart. So there are six signs and symptoms of protein S deficiency. The first one is the edema. Edema, which is characterized by swollen and puffy skin, is a classic symptom of kosher birth. Because of reduced human serum albumin levels, severe protein deficiency leads to a lower and chronic pressure. As a result, fluid accumulates in tissues causing swelling. For the same reason, Protein deficiency may lead to fluid buildup inside the abdominal cavity. A bloated belly is a character, characteristic sign of kosher food. The next one is the fatty liver. Another common... So, fatty liver is a left untreated condition may develop into fatty liver disease, causing inflammation, li liver scarring, and potentially liver failure. So, fatty liver is a common condition in the obese people, as well as those who consume a lot of alcohol. Why it occurs in case of protein deficiency is unclear, but studies suggest that an impaired synthesis of fat transporting proteins known as lipoproteins may, con co may contribute to the condition so the third one is the skin nail and hair problems so protein deficiency often leaves its mark on the skin hairs and nails which are la largely made of protein for instance Kosher curry in children is distinguished by flaky or splitting skin, redness, and patches of the de depigmented skin. So, hair thinning, faded hair color, hair loss or alopecia, and brittle nails are also common symptoms. However, these symptoms are unlikely to appear unless you have a severe protein S deficiency. So the fourth one is the loss of muscle mass. So when the entire protein is in short supply, the body tends to take protein from skeletal muscles 
to pres preserve more important tissues and body functions. As a result, lack of protein leads to muscle wasting over time. So, even moderate protein in insufficiency may cause muscle wasting, especially in elder people. One study in elder men and women found that muscle loss was greater among those who consumed the lower amount of protein. So, the fifth one is the greater risk, risk of bone fractures. So, your bones are also at risk. Consuming enough protein may, we may weaken your bones and increase the risk of fractures. One study in post-menopausal -men women found that higher protein intake was associated with a lower risk of hip fractures. The highest intake was linked to a 69% reduced risk, and anim animal source protein appeared to have a great benefits. So the last one is increased severity of infections. So impaired immune function may increase the risk or severity of infections, a common sim symptom of severe protein deficiency. So for instance, one study in mice showed that following a diet consisting of only 2% protein was associated was with a more severe influ influenza infection compared to a diet providing 18% of protein. So the two common findings are the deep vein thrombosis and the pulmonary embolism. So the next one is the causes of protein S deficiency. The first one is acquired protein S deficiency occurs as a result of another underlying condition such as a liver disease, necrotic syndrome, certain infections, the use of oral contraceptives, vitamin K deficiency, surgery, or people undergoing chemotherapy treatment. The next one is that protein S deficiency is caused by a variation in the pro, pro S1 gene. Uh, it will provide instructions for making a protein called protein S, which is important for controlling blood clotting. By itself, protein S cannot carry out the chemical reactions necessary for regulating the formation of blood clots. Instead, protein S attaches to certain enzymes and enhances their function. So, the last one is the risk to have a child to a parent who has one abnormal protein S gene is 50% with each pregnancy. Sometimes, episode, episodes of blood clots are triggered or provoked by the other risk factors such as surgery, pregnancy, or immobilization, trauma, hormonal con contraception, or replacement therapy, or inactivity. The next one is the diagnosis. A diagnosis of a genetic form of protein S deficiency can be challenging because there are many different conditions that can temporarily lower the levels of a protein S in the blood or the acquired protein S deficiency. So as you seen in the picture, it is a condition of Quasher-Kerr. So Quasher-Kerr is the most severe form of disease that is a lack of protein are also called malnutrition and the first one is there is not a specific therapy for patients with protein S deficiency or the use of anticoagulation therapy however is highly effective um, in the treatment and prevention of blood clots in patients with a common type of protein S deficiency due to inheritance of one abnormal protein S gene the next one is such therapies are generally effective regardless of the underlying risk factors or genetic abnormalities predisposing a patient to developing a blood clot. The next one is anticoagulant therapy is the use of drugs like heparin and warfarin that thin the blood and make it harder for the blood clot to clot. The choice of drug specific dosage and duration of anticoagulant therapy 
will vary among affected individuals. Factors influencing the treatment decisions include the severity and frequency of blood clots, potential drug and dietary interactions, an individual's personal preference, and age are overall health. And the last one is that some individuals with a severe form of protein S deficiency may remain on this therapy for life. Special care must be taken if warfarin is used because of the risk of warfarin-induced skin necrosis. So that's all for my presentation. Thank you.